Hi everyone, so it's been a while. Uh, today, we are gonna continue with our topic. Uh, well, last time, I've, I remember that I asked you guys to print the notes that I shared in your WhatsApp group. So that was the use and abuse of drugs. So hopefully you have it with you now. So if you don't have it, so please, please, please take, you know, uh, please go out and print it okay and if you have it with you now it's brilliant so and we're gonna actually discuss about that notes we discuss about the topic now so i feel well i have it here yes okay so this is the note that i've given you okay the topic that we're gonna discuss is about the use and abuse of drugs, okay? So this topic is not foreign to you. I'm pretty sure you have come across this topic quite a lot of time uh, over and over, especially, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure in MIB have touched this and probably your English subject maybe have touched this at some point or in Bahasa Melayu or whatever. I'm pretty sure you have known this, okay? But for biology, uh, we're going to discuss it and we're going to talk about a bit more on the biological side as well, okay? What are the relationships of the drugs and how are they actually affecting our body, okay? So uh, if you see here, so firstly, I'm gonna direct you to learning outcomes. So are your notes, and if you see here, you have at least six learning outcomes that we need to know, okay? So the first one is you need to know about what definition of drugs, so what are drugs, and what are they, what, what do they do? And second, we need to describe the medicinal use of antibiotics. So we're gonna talk about the medicinal use of drugs. And one of the medicinal drugs that we should know is about antibiotics, which we'll have a look. And number three, the effects and abuse of heroin. And heroin is actually a type of drug and usually in yeah, Europe, uh, it can be used as medicinal drugs, actually, okay? But for some reason, people have abused it for quite a long time. So we consider this as a harmful drugs now, okay? And number four, we are, we're also going to discuss about alcohol. Number five, we're going to discuss about tobacco smoke, your smoking. And number six, we're going to discuss about the effects of smoking on, uh, on people, whether it's not, why is it no longer socially acceptable? Okay, so siapa -siapa yang okay, so yeah, so without further ado, okay, we take out your notes. So as you can see, there are a few blanks here and there. So this is your chance actually to fill in the blank. Okay, so if you don't watch this video, so shame on you. Okay, now, so introduction to drugs, right? So what is a drug? Okay, so here a drug is any e administered chemical substances. So uh, in this case, a drug is actually any externally administered chemical substance. So externally administered chemical substance other than food that modifies or affects chemical reactions in the body. So what I'm saying is anything that you take in, okay, any chemical substance that you take in, okay? So, contohnya, I don't know, ubat, right? Or Panadol, or ubat bato, or whatsoever. Anything extra that you take in your body and it causes chemical changes into your body, okay? Chemical reactions in your body. That is what we call drugs, okay? So, as you can see, kalau misalnya ubat biasa, you take into your body, it causes chemical reaction, okay? Anything else or some antibiotic, it causes chemical reaction or, or vaccination, contohnya as well. Vaccination causes chemical reaction to your body, causes kamu dama mata, that is also a form of drugs. So drugs any in the semestinya, I saw drugs any are harmful. I saw drugs any bahaya, bahaya, bahaya. No, okay. Actually, yeah, drugs any, it was initially, it was actually developed because to help people, okay. They were actually firstly developed because to for for benefits of patients, okay, untuk orang-orang yang sakit sakit, okay, ganya masalahnya timbul timbul masalah pasal ada orang babal, okay, orang babal yang ubat yang sepatutnya dia makan, dia makan, 
Rasul yang obat sepatutnya Inda makan banyak-banyak, memajar yang makan banyak-banyak sampai pingsan, okay? Sampai ke langit ke mana, okay? So that is the problem, right? For drugs, I mean, the drug itself is not, is actually not harmful on its own. It is harmful if you take it excessively, okay? So the second point here, a drug may be B B a drug may be beneficial or harmful. Okay, so drugs it can be useful, it can be useful to you, or it can be harmful to you as well. It depending on how we actually use it. So depending macam mana kami gunakan and whether it's actually suitable for us. Okay, because there are some drugs which are actually quite useful, but it's not suitable for us, then it will become harmful. Okay, so it depends on the individual, it depends on how we use it, and it also depends on the suitability of the drugs, whether it's suitable for us or whether it's not suitable for us. So it will actually depend, or uh, the results will actually depend. Okay, and the problem usually arises when people become addicted or dependent on the particular drugs. So I mean that. As I mentioned, the problem bahayanya is kalau misalnya orang ngatur pandai-pandai makan panadol sekati-sekatinya in the mak mm, whatsoever. Okay? That's the problem that arises. And we can, because of this, we can actually classify drugs into three types. One is what we call as medicinal drugs. Two, what we call as socially acceptable drugs. Three, what we call as harmful or illegal drugs. Okay, so now upper definitions now. Color medicinal drugs. Oh, sorry, what is the hell? Okay, so upper medicinal drugs. Any it's a kind of drugs that are taken under medical supervision and used to treat disease to relieve pain or in surgery. So upper maksudnya, any ialah sejenis dada sejenis drugs yang digunakan untuk relieving pain, untuk merawat pesakit, untuk surgery untuk menahan sakit and it must be taken under medical supervision apa maksudnya mesti doktor yang membagi mesti ada kebenaran dari doktor atau baru tak namanya medicinal drugs okay now next is what we call a socially acceptable drugs now what is socially acceptable drugs socially socially acceptable drugs Drugs in which its usage is commonly accepted by a society or public. Example, alcohol, nicotine, which is now getting more uh, less and less accepted, and caffeine. So caffeine in the form of energy drink. Okay. So alcohol, although luckily in Brunei, it's not socially accepted. Okay, because we are a Muslim country, but if we are talking actually outside of Brunei, we're talking about the UK, we're talking about the US or ever, everywhere else, kalau alcohol ini is actually quite accepted for them. Okay, but even though they are a type of drugs, okay, so that's why we call them as socially acceptable drugs. Kalau cigarette is getting less and less accepted now, but Kalau di Brunei, if you if you if you kena patang bersinggup, then you would get fined, you will get charges. Okay, so it's very, it's it's forbidden now in Brunei. Tapi kalau in other countries, it's still acceptable. So that's why we still consider them as socially acceptable, acceptable drugs, not accepted, acceptable drugs. Okay. And last but not least, is the harmful or illegal drugs. Yang ini is totally ban your punya usage. Yeah. Okay. And yang enang indah indah kena suruh anywhere else kalau kamu ada ani kamu akan kena tangkap kamu akan kena simpan penjara kalau dapat tak kena bunuh selajar lagi baik okay so apa nama drugs uh, apa harmful drugsnya okay, let me just okay apa harmful drugs ani drugs that cause physical or mental health damage so you know it's it, it makes sense. Why is it harmful? Why is it illegal? Okay, kena kena haramkan. Pasal apa? Ia menyebabkan physical or mental health damage. Ia menyebabkan kerosakan arah kita ni. Okay, sebab itu kami haramkan. Right? So contohnya apa? Contohnya macam ecstasy. So ecstasy, marijuana, and heroin. So ecstasy, apa? What is ecstasy? 
so something yang membagi hayal okey kalau kamu kalau kamu kalau kamu ambil terus jumpa ayah pin okey kerja langit terus okey so marijuana is a bubble marijuana is weed and heroin is a pan heroin heroin lah okey i don't know what they are but anyway okay so you have three classes of drugs medicinal drugs socially acceptable drugs as well as harmful or illegal drugs okay now so oh by the way what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at three learning objectives today yeah uh, so should, should we do three or four three four three four then uh, maybe around one we're going to do one we're going to do two and we're going to do four one two and four okay that's what we're going to do today one two and four three five six next week okay so firstly we're going to talk about antibiotics first okay medicinal drugs example of medicinal drugs so what is an antibiotic an antibiotic is a chemical substance produced by microorganisms Okay, so antibiotic is a chemical substance produced by microorganisms, particularly siapa, particularly actually by fungi. Okay, and what do they do? So these drugs, these antibiotics, what do they do? They actually slow down or stops the growth of other microorganisms. So what do they do? They actually untuk menghalang. Kalau kami ambil, ia boleh menghalang daripada the growth daripada pembiak. Can other microorganism. Contohnya bakteria sama fungi. Tapi ia antibiotik ini ia indah akan membunuh, ia indah akan slow down siapa. It will not slow down viruses. Okay, so that's the thing about antibiotics. Okay, they are produced by microorganisms. Kamu buat extra atasnya, particularly apa fungi. And what do they do? They slow down or stop the growth of other microorganisms. They kill. In other words, they kill. Who do they kill? Bacteria and fungi. But who they cannot kill? They cannot kill virus. Okay. Now, different antibiotics have different mechanism of actions depending on the antibiotic's chemical structure and the affinity or likelihood to target certain structures on the microorganisms. So apa maksudnya sini? So kan kami tahu ada banyak jenis antibiotik. Okay, ada antibiotik lain-lain banyak banyak. Kalau kamu jumpa doktor banyak jenis antibiotik baginya. Okay, kalau misalnya yang kamu sakit sikit, ani baginya. Kalau kamu sakit lain, ani baginya. Makin teruk lagi sakit kamu, ani baginya. Okay, so why you have different types? Because they have different mechanism of action. So maksudnya Antibiotik kamu tu caranya membunuh bakteria, caranya membunuh fungi ataupun slowing down the growthnya tu is lain-lain. Lain-lain mengikut apa? Depending on the antibiotic chemical structure, depending on the chemical structuresnya. So nya the composition of atomsnya apa tu ataupun siapa yang dia target? Is it targeting the cell wall? Is it targeting protein? Whatsoever. Okay, we'll have a look later. Okay, it actually varies. Okay, and it varies according to the affinity or likelihood to target certain structure on the microorganism. So if they have different structures, so which means they also have different targets. Okay, so different target on the microorganisms. And apa contoh contohnya the modes of actions nya? So contohnya ni nak. Okay, so some antibiotics. This is summarizing as you can see here this is actually summarizing how do the antibiotics work okay so not all antibiotics work the same that's why you have different types so you have some antibiotics they stop building of cell wall maksudnya ia men mem building apa building menahan pembuatan dinding okay cell cell wall okay So, macam mana ia stop building the cell wall? They, you know, it's to do with the chemical structures of the antibiotics itself, right? But what do they do? They actually target the cell wall, the building of cell walls. Now, why do they get? It? Why is this so efficient? Okay, why is it so efficient? Because kalau humans, animal cell, animal cell mana ada cell wall. 
Tapi kalau mikroorganisme, contohnya fungi sama bakteria, these two ada cell wall. Okay, so kalau kami makan antibiotik, antibiotik atau ia indah akan membunuh sel kami. Pasalnya sel kami mana ada cell wall, tapi ia akan mengagak bakteria sama fungi. Pasal apa? Bakteria sama pang fungi ia ada cell wall. So maksudnya kalau bakteria sama fungi sepatutnya ada cell wall, and suddenly kami bagi ubat untuk orang indah membuat cell wall. Suddenly, what will happen is they don't have cell wall anymore. Now, what will happen is kalau misalnya air masuk, they can expand, 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 and they will burst. So the microorganisms yang sepatutnya ada cell wall itu, they die. Okay, so that's one way the the antibiotics work. So they stop the building of cell wall. Cell wall siapa? Cell wall fungi sama cell wall bacteria. Okay, how does this work? Macam mana it works well? Because kalau human, mana ada cell wall. So artinya antibiotik itu hanya target mikroorganism yang ada cell wall. Okay? Now, but of course, not all fungi, not all microorganisms actually have cell wall. Okay? And sometimes ada yang ada cell wall, tapi they develop resistance. Maksudnya resistance satu, ia kuat. Okay, dapat yang melawan. Okay, antibiotic. So what else? What other methods that they can use? What other antibiotics they can use? Is they can use antibiotics which target, which disrupt the function of cell membrane. Maksudnya, ini kalau tadi di sini ia target building of cell wall. Now ia target the function of cell membrane. Ia membuatkan cell membrane nya tu hancur. Okay, Nina. So cell membrane are important barriers that control the flow of substance. A damage to this structure could result in the loss of important nutrients essential for the cell survival. So kalau ni kalau tadi ia target cell wall, ani ia target cell membrane. Kalau target cell membrane, artinya kan cell membrane control the flow in and out. So if they target this, which means the cell membrane can no longer be, become stable. So they cannot control the substance going in and out. So as a result, the cell, the cell which gets affected by this will then burst. Okay, they will lysis as well. They will burst. Okay, because they, they, they will die because the substance can no longer get in and out in a controlled manner. Okay, but the thing is, the disruptions of function of cell membrane, it may affect your normal cells, your, your normal body cells as well. Because our normal body cells also has cell membrane. Okay? So this is Kira one of the ways. Next is they can also stop the production of protein. Okay, because this one they will make it in such a way that they will all, they will only target the production of the microorganisms punya protein okay contohnya kalau microorganisms kalau bacteria get into your body once they get into your body satu bacteria lama-lama bacteria itu akan membiak okay cemana yang membiak pasal ia growing cemana ia growing ia perlukan protein so untuk ia stop ia growing, untuk ia stop ia merebak, apa kami buat? Kami tutup, kami stop ia punya production of protein supaya ia indah membuat bacterial proteinsnya. Okay, apa bacterial proteinsnya? Macam enzimesnya or whatsoever, anything else. Okay, and so that kalau kami tutup, kami halang ia membuat microbial protein daripada membuat Microorganisms punya protein, indahnya terbuat proteinnya, artinya indahnya membiak banyak. Okay. Now, selain itu, others, other antibiotics, they can stop DNA and RNA productions. Okay. So how is this good? Because DNA and RNA is important component of genetic material. So genetic materials ini, ini yang kira yang kena pasing-pasing arah anak cucu-cucunya, arah sel-sel yang lain. Kalau tidak ada DNA, artinya new cell, um, bakteria, 
fungi itu ia indahkan membiak juga. So kan sama macam production of protein, nada protein ini dapat membiak. Same thing, nada DNA ini ada membiak as well. And lastly, it may also disrupt, it may target other metabolic processes. So other metabolic processes which is essential for the survival of microorganisms. Contohnya apa? In a folic acid pathway which is involved in making DNA molecules can be disrupted by antibiotics. So certain certain antibiotics they works by they don't stop mRNA, they don't stop DNA, they don't stop protein, they don't stop cell membrane, they don't stop cell wall, but actually they stop something else. Contohnya maybe they stop this folic acid pathway or to make something else, okay? Or it can be stopping the bacterial respiration as well. So it targets specific processes in the bacteria, okay? So this is just um, the different modes. How do the antibiotics work? So in the semua antibiotic stop semani, or in the semua antibiotic target semua sekali, no, okay? So it depends on Orang punya, as I mentioned, it depends on the chemical structures of the antibiotics. Which one do they actually target? Okay, so that's about medical, uh, medicinal drugs, okay, about antibiotics. Okay, and you can see here, you have, uh, sorry, you have different examples of antibiotics that are given. Okay, kalau stop building of cell wall, example-nya penicillin, panadol. Okay, disruption in cell membrane, uh, polymyxin B. Production of protein, tetracyline. Um, kalau stopping DNA, RNA production is quinolones. Kalau disruptions of metabolic process is sulfonamides. Okay, so you have actually different types of antibiotics and they have different modes. Okay. So that's about. Uh, sorry about that. So that's about the um, medicinal drugs. The next thing that we're going to discuss is about socially acceptable drugs. Okay, and in this case, the ones that we are going to concern ourselves with today is about alcohol. Okay. So here, alcohol is normally consumed in the form of alcoholic beverages such as wine, beer, or spirits. So as you know, kalau arah lab pun kami ada alcohol juga, right? So you have the ethanol, and that's also alcohol, but you don't drink the alcohol that are present in the lab, okay? I mean, you can if you want to kill yourself, okay? But usually they will be consumed in the form of alcoholic beverages, okay, which has been diluted to that, and that will be in the form of wine, beer, or spirits, and they are rapidly absorbed. So the thing with alcohol is, once you actually consume, they will be rapidly absorbed. Dora akan masuk taros arah mana absorb into the bloodstream. Okay, dora akan taros masuk arah saluran darah kamu and bloodstream arah mana? Okay, saluran darah arah your from the intestines. So masuk kamu minum masuk arah intestines kamu, your small intestine, and from the small intestine they will get rapidly absorbed into your bloodstream. And once they it's go, one o'clock. The alcohol they should be broken down in the liver. So once you actually consume, the only thing that they can do is they will masuk arah dalam darah, and then the next thing that they will go is they will go to your liver. Untuk apa? They will get broken down. Okay, so alcohol actually has no no good use to your body. Masuk harus kena pacahkan saja. Okay, so it will be broken down in the liver. Right. So here, people actually drink at wedding, religious festivals, or social gatherings, which is usually socially acceptable, as most people are able to control okay, the amount of alcohol they drink. So, kenapa ia socially acceptable? People actually drink it at wedding, you know, in, in, in Christian weddings. Lah. Okay, religious festivals, again, Christian religious festivals, or social gathering, gatherings, right? Because kenapa you're socially acceptable? Because most people, okay, hopefully most people, they are able to control the amount of alcohol they drink. And the problem actually arises when a person drinks to an extent that it becomes harmful to harmful to health and his body craves for alcohol. So 
masalahnya timbul kalau misalnya kamu ini keluhan terapi menggunakan alkohol memancar. Okay? Sampai tahap ia menghampulkan, membahayakan kesehatan kamu. And sampaikan kamu mimpi-mimpi kan minum alkohol. You are craving for alcohol. You get addicted to it. Okay? So you become alcoholic. Right? So now, we're going to look at the effects of alcohol on the nervous systems. Okay? So kenapa? Kenapa kalau kamu minum alkohol, lepas itu kadangnya kamu palau. Okay? Atau kamu tidak ingat. Okay? Segala-galanya tak akan lupa. Okay? Segala yang yang sepatutnya benda-benda simple yang boleh dipikirkan oleh otak kamu, suddenly kamu indah lagi terbuat. Okay, and sometimes kena suruh memegang, dimpas, dia terpegang. Entah apakah dia pegang ni yang lain. Okay, why? Apa efek dia? Because alcohol ini, dia actually ada efek arah kami punya nervous system. Nervous system, which one is it? Our brain, our spinal cord, our neurons. Sensory, motor, relay neurons. So, we cannot coordinate. Okay, we cannot coordinate our actions. Now, so what is it? So, alcohol... Where's my mouse? Alcohol is a depressant. So, apa maksudnya? Depressant ini is untuk slow down your body. So, there are some drugs which helps to increase your body. You know, kalau some drugs kamu makan, ada ubat membagi hyper. Tapi kalau alcohol, kamu minum, ia membuatkan kamu macam relax, sehingga over relax. So that one is what we call as a depressant. Okay, and what does the depressant do? It actually slows down some brain function. Actually, it slows down, slows down your uh, nervous systems. Okay, so that is the functions of alcohol. So they act as a depressant, and its effects actually vary from person to person. In some, it actually causes a anxiety. So some people, once they drink alcohol, they become anxiety. Macam indah tentu rasa. Okay? And in some, it actually reduces nervous tension and worries and even stimulates appetite. Some people, it causes macam stimulates appetite. So macam kan makan yang banyak. Okay. The person becomes carefree as alcohol takes away his inhibition, so his self-control is reduced. So, kalau ia becoming depressed, kalau ia macam relax berhabis, so kalau ia relax berhabis, masalah, misalnya ada anjing datang pun macam, eh, comelnya anjing. Walaupun yang anjing itu is anjing pitbull, yang memberi jam. Okay. So, it become carefree. Because apa alcohol itu, it takes away, it inhibits it suppress ia meng, me, 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 menghilangkan melowerkan your self control melowerkan your uh, apa tu your uh, awareness your brain punya awareness okay and then the third point as the person drinks more alcohol other observable effects of intoxication Okay, observable effects of intoxications. So, cara kami tahu ia atau um, apa ni, um, uh, mabuk sudah. Okay, so cara kami tahu ia minum sampai mabuk, ia intoxicated sudah. Es, ia ada slurred speech. Slurred speech maksudnya, you know, biasa bercakap, bercakap tambus. Tapi kalau ni slurred speech macam indah tentu tentu cakap, indah lagi tambus tu. Okay. Second, they have a blurred vision. So, macam kabur dia matanya. They have poor muscle coordination. Makes him or her clumsy and unable to walk steadily. So, poor muscle coordination. So, maksudnya apa? They cannot walk properly anymore. So, kalau suruh berjalan straight line, in dia terjalan straight line. Okay? Can... Yes, okay, kerja If you just wait for a bit, pause. Can I pause this? Pause and share. Okay, let me just go up for a bit. Up, just one minute.
Okay, sorry about that. Right. Oh, sorry. Oh, what did I do? Um, Right, so here, okay, where was I? Um, Problem muscle coordinations, yes. And the fourth observable effects of intoxications would be your judgments um, deteriorations. So which means that they lose their ability, the normal ability to judge something. So for example, so they can't tell whether they are, if they are driving, so they can't tell whether they're going fast or whether they're going slow, or they can't tell let's say you ask them to catch a ball they can't tell macam misalnya is it sampai sudah bulat tu ada tangan orang atau ni tidak yeah, so that's what we call as judgment deteriorations okay so they over they underestimate the speed of something because the punya brain function has been suppressed so the punya brain nya tu macam dulu ni sikit And this is also all the reasons why, if you are drinking alcohol, if you are intoxicated, it is advisable you are not you know, advisable. You are you are not supposed to drive, because simply because you cannot underestimate your speed, you have blurred visions and you have poor muscle coordination. So which means you you cannot you you know you can't judge a car coming fast or a car coming slow, or you cannot turn the wheels as fast as you could in, in a danger, right? So that's why you're not supposed to drive. Okay. So that's the effects on the individuals, particularly out of the nervous system. Okay. The next effect that we're gonna talk about is the effect of alcohol on the society. Okay, so this is the effects of alcohol as a whole. Right? So when actually people drink alcohol frequently, when you become alcoholic, he or she can become addicted. Okay, So you can become addicted and you will be unable to stop drinking alcohol until he or she is drunk and her body actually becomes dependent. Okay, Until you actually becomes totally dependent on the alcohol. So it's as if that if you, if you don't drink alcohol, you will feel pain. You will feel, you know, very restless okay you, you feel like you cannot function at all right alcohol until he becomes alcoholic which is a liability to society apa maksud liability maksudnya it's you're just a trash to society okay you're just useless to society okay how come you become useless because when you become alcoholic suddenly you become you neglect your work kamu ninggalkan kerja kamu kamu ninggalkan family kamu and to that tato, what will happen is you tend to exhibit violent behavior. Come on, you tend to be uh, macam, macam, you know, macam spandoy. Okay, so you, you're, you're, you're crazy. You become violent towards everything. Okay, not just to everyone, but especially towards your family members. Okay, so, and also, what tends to happen is tidak semestinya kalau kamu minum alkoholik ani, kamu minum alcohol, you will commit crimes. No, okay. But you tend to, okay. You are more likely to commit crimes because your judgment is being affected, okay. So your judgment is being affected, okay. Macam, rasa nampak dia, okay. Ia minum alkohol, rasa nampak dia bini-bini melintas. Rasa sepatutnya ia ni macam in the apa tu alim ulama tapi first time minum alcohol rasa lupa tu segala-gala imannya okey nampak bini-bini melintas membuat-buat tu segala-galanya okey lepas satu ah terjadi ta ah, segala benda-benda yang indah diingini berlaku okey so they suddenly they become they they are much more prone to commit crimes okey so they become more committed uh uh if they are under the influence of drugs, okay? So that's why it's really no longer acceptable now, okay? And next is, this is the effects on the individual, and particularly what we're gonna look at is the effect on the digestive systems, okay? We're looking at the effects kami punya saluran permakanan kami. So apa effectsnya? So here, alcohol stimulates 
seed production. So stimulates. Maksudnya ia membuatkan parut kami, awas tamak, to produce extra acids. So selalunya awas tamak di andang orang produce hydrochloric acid. Yes, but if you drink alcohol, it will actually resulted that your stomach itu produce extra alcohol. Lagi banyak alcohol. Okay, lagi lagi banyak alcohol. Sorry, lagi banyak acidnya. So lagi banyak HCl. So kalau lagi banyak HCl, it actually increases the risk of gastric ulcer. So makin banyak acid, makin kuat acidnya, artinya makin tak chances of parutnya tu kena hakis hakis. Okay, untuk hakis hakis increase the risk of ulcer menjadi ulcer. And second point, the prolonged alcohol abuse. Kalau misalnya kamu bukan alkoholik untuk selama beberapa tahun-tahun tahunan, okay, it will actually damage your liver. Ia mendamage, ia apa damage ni? Mengaffect your liver, and this will lead to cirrhosis. Apa ijaan cirrhosis? Cirrhosis. Okay, this may lead to cirrhosis of liver. Apa maksud cirrhosis of liver? Maksudnya liver kamu atau hati kamu atau terluka. Okay, hati kamu terluka. A disease in which the liver cells are destroyed and replaced with fibrous tissue. Okay, they are replaced with fibrous tissue because hati kamu terluka. Lepas okay. satu kamu mesti tambah lah hati kamu. Okay, kamu mesti repair hati kamu. Okay. So kalau kamu repair, kamu repair dengan fibrous tissue. Okay. So let's say kamu hati kamu terluka, sudah hati kamu terluka, lepas satu, you know, kamu hanya tinggal tinggal lidahku untuk mem membaiki hatiku. Tapi sudah sudah sekali hati kamu terluka, kamu indahkan sama. Okay. Hati kamu tu indahkan sama macam sebelumnya. Okay, hati kamu tertutup oleh tertutup dengan benda lain. So which is which is literally too true because it is literally replaced with fibrous tissue. So it's no longer replace, it's no longer repair. Kami pakai liver liver cells, but now we use fibrous cells, so fibrous tissue. So once hati terluka, indahkan sama. Okay, so this actually affects the liver functions. So the liver they cannot perform its normal functions anymore, right? So kalau dulu liver cells, therefore they can have the liver functions. Tapi kalau now liver cells, tapi with fibrous tissue, fibrous cells in the lain, yeah, in the case sama functions. Okay, and three. This H is actually stands for hemorrhage. So hemorrhage. Apa maksudnya? Is internal bleeding. So ada apa ijaan hemorrhage? So I'll show you. It's probably not here. Okay, but I'll just I'll just spell it to you. H e internal bleeding hemorrhage. H a e m o r h a g e hemorrhage. Okay, so hemorrhage means internal bleeding in the liver. So which makes sense. Kalau kamu cirrhosis, kalau kamu terluka, so of course ada pendarahan. So pendarahan itu kami panggil hemorrhage, okay, in the liver, and this will leads to liver failure. So maksudnya hati kamu tu sudah terluka, sudah berdarah di dalam, so hati kamu akan fail, ter gagal, okay. And often cause death in patients with alcoholic cirrhosis. Kalau hati terluka, then literally kamu boleh mati kerana hati terluka. Okay, hati terluka because of alcohol, not because of something else. Okay, not sure if something else. I know Aisha might, Aisha might be asking. Kalau ada ni tanya ni. Kalau anu, kalau hati terluka pasal putus cinta siapa? No one. Okay, no. Not the same thing. Okay, this is all, all to do with alcoholic cirrhosis. Okay, so this is this is it. The effects of alcohol. Therefore, we can classify them as immediate or long term effects. So, kalau immediate effectsnya, contohnya yang maksudnya yang on the spot. Okay, once you drink alcohol, 
you might get this. Reduced self-control, difficulty in walking, difficulty in seeing and speaking, injury due to accidents, and loss of body heat. So, maksudnya, kamu, kamu terasa panas, tapi sebenarnya bukan kamu. Badan kamu makin panas. Sebenarnya badan kamu makin sajok because you lose heat. Okay, so you're losing heat. And if you become alcoholic, you become alcohol dependent. Therefore, you may be uh, other long-term effects now, which is malnutrition, stomach ulcer, withdrawal symptoms, delirious state, and uncontrollable shaking. So malnutrition, maksudnya apa? So maksudnya kamu kekurangan zat makanan. Stomach ulcer, maksudnya parut kamu, your stomach kamu ada ulcer. Withdrawal symptoms. Ah, withdrawal symptoms ini maksudnya kalau misalnya kamu minum alkohol, okay, kamu malah setahun dua tiga tahun setiap hari minum alkohol. Tapi selepas satu, let's say, kamu indah minum alkohol sehari, pasalnya habis stop, okay? Atau whatever lah, whatever the reason is, kamu indah minum sehari. And then, sudah kamu minum minum sehari itu, then you will actually experience this withdrawal symptoms. Apa contoh withdrawal symptomsnya? Let's say, indah minum alkohol sehari itu, damam dia. Sudah itu damam, langsung sakit ke kepalanya, sakit ke hatinya, sakit ke segala-galanya, tahan sakit, muntah, muntah, tak apa. Okay? And then, you pikir, hanya dengan minum alkohol, segala-galanya akan baik. Okay? So, those are actually withdrawal symptoms. Okay, so delirious state maksudnya ia dalam macam gila, okay, in the mind gila, but um, you know like bukan dirinya sendiri, and uncontrollable shaking, uncontrollable shaking, you know macam kata kaca, tu macam macam orang you know kata kaca kesajukan tak sentiasa walaupun hari panas, okay, in the pulang kesajukan tapi it's just uncontrollable so shaking. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, I would only be mention. Uh, we're gonna go through tiga saja in the panel today. Okay, so number one learning objective: this defining uh, drugs. Number two, describing the use of medicinal drugs, antibiotics, macam mana the modes of actions nya. And number four, describing the effects of excessive consumptions of alcohol. Okay, we need to know kalau arah ada soalan apa efek-efeknya alkohol ini. Arah kamu punya nervous system, arah kamu punya digestive system, as well as kamu arah society. Okay, so that's it for today, I guess. Okay, so that's it for today. So we will continue the next part of the lesson next week. Okay, so that's it. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.